to be fair, I actually do want to do something a little different. Rather than just looking at the characters in general, I want to look at each video game company and discuss which characters from those companies I believe would have the most likely chance. Now I should state that this video is just for fun, it shouldn't be taken seriously at the end of the day, I really don't care who makes it in, who do you want in, and of course every choice is valid. This disclaimer won't stop people from being upset anyway because we can't go two minutes in this day and age without being upset at something. It tastes like water! But hey, I thought I'd put a disclaimer here anyway. Also, I will not be doing Nintendo franchises since, frankly, there's so many more characters they could include, picking a most likely seems kind of impossible. Alright, I'm going to start with the companies that are already in the game, and then go in the order that they were introduced, and then I will move on to companies that have yet to have a character in the game. Now, I won't be do going through every company, else we'll be here all day, if person's education got a character, the most likely would certainly be the avatar from Papa Tropica. Yeah, I'm not doing that. So I think I'll just stick with the big ones. Now with that said, let's start with Konami. Now admittedly, I don't know much about Konami other than the fact that they own Metal Gear, Silent Hill, turn all the franchises into Pachinko Machines, and overall just aren't a very good company. But I decided to go ahead and do some research, and it seems that out of all the franchises, the two that have the biggest shot at getting in would be someone from Silent Hill or a character from Contra. Now personally, I'm a bit more familiar with Silent Hill franchise than I'm with Contra, but I do think they both have a shot. Contra is one of the last few classic NES games along with Ninja Gaiden that is yet not in Smash, and his ability with his 8 directional shooting would be pretty cool and unique. But out of the two, I think Silent Hill would probably be the series to get a fighter since one, it's more popular of the two, and two, we have yet to have a fighter from a horror game be represented, so it would definitely fill that void. Now, I can already hear people saying, but Sakurai said that fighters' popularity doesn't matter as long as they're fun. And I do agree with that, but I still do think popularity does play somewhat of a role. Even Terry, while not the most popular video game character in ge general, is still the most recognizable out of SNK's lineup. The one thing that I do wonder is if a Silent Hill character did get into Smash, would they go with one of the protagonists of the game, or would they opt to use a, a creature or a monster like Pyramid Head? I, I don't know, like I said, I don't know much about the series, so maybe you guys can let me know. Who, who would you want to see be re represent the, the, the Silent Hill franchise? Alright, now that's Konami's out of the way, let's move on to Sega. Now the interesting thing about Sega is that when it comes to new characters, many people seem to want another Sonic character. And I can see why, not only is Sonic one of the biggest franchises in gaming ever, but his representation in Smash is, uh... Hey Mr. Sakurai, what should Sonic's moveset be? Ball. So if another Sonic character would to get in, it would, it would definitely help with that. I think the two most likely characters would probably be Tails or Eggman. Tails has been one of Sonic's most consistent companions throughout the whole franchise, and Eggman is the main villain. Ultimately, I'm not sure which one of these would be more likely, but I would personally want to see Eggman. Not only is he another villain, but I think his moveset would probably be a lot more interesting with him and his Eggmobile and his tools, and, and the stage would most certainly be the Death Egg. I think, I think he'd just be more interesting, but that's just me. That's just, it's just, it's just a personal thing. Uh, but that's just the Sonic franchises. Let, let's talk about the other Sega titles. Now, Sega has a lot of franchises. Monkey Ball, Streets of Rage, J Jet Set Radio, Knights, Space Channel 5, Virtua Fighter, etc., etc., etc. But I think out of all Sega's franchises right now, I think the one that has the best shot in getting into Smash is Kiryu from Yakuza. Why that series? Well, to be frank, it is currently one of Sega's most relevant series at the moment. They're doing very well, they're getting a new upcoming game, and I've seen a lot of people request him. He's not the most popular choice by any things, but he's definitely in people's thoughts. You could even have like a unique gimmick with him where he switched between fighting styles, giving him a completely different moveset. That might be a bit much, but who knows? Next up is Capcom. Now Capcom is another company with a very rich catalog of characters. Devil May Cry, Ace Attorney, Okami, Resident Evil, Dead Rising, and so on. But to pick the most likely, it would probably be either Dante from Devil May Cry or Phoenix Wright from the Ace Attorney series. And I could really see it going either way. Dante is overall the more popular character, more popular than Phoenix Wright. But within the Nintendo realm, Ace Attorney is more well known and requested. Either way, it'd be pretty cool. Next up is Bandai Namco. 
Now, Bandai Namco does have a, a lot of iconic IPs, but I'm not familiar with a whole lot of them. I know of Klonoa, and I have heard of Lloyd, but I actually had to do some research on them to learn anything. And honestly, I think Lloyd is probably the one to, to, to get the highest likely chance of getting in Smash. He is quite popular in Japan. All right, well, then now we got to move on to Square Enix. Uh, now, Square Enix ha is another company with a lot of potential. Uh, take, a, take a shot every time I say that. I mean, Final Fantasy alone has so many characters to pick from. And, like, you got Tifa, and, like, people want Sephiroth, and that's just from 7. There's still other Final Fantasy games that could be represented, and that's just Final Fantasy. We still got, like, Chrono Trigger, Nier Automata, Tomb Raider, and so much more. Uh, it's kind of difficult to narrow it down to just one, but if I had to pick just two that weren't from Final Fantasy... It'd be either Chrono or Lara Croft. My reasoning is, well, Chrono is from Chrono Trigger, an immensely popular RPG from the 90s that many people, you know, it has to be one of the, it's like one of the best RPGs of all time. And Lara Croft is up there with Samus with one of the most impactful female g in gaming of all time. So I think she has a higher chance than people think. I don't know much about either franchise or what kind of gimmick would set them apart, but they would definitely be cool. Personally, I'm rooting for Lara Croft. Next up is Atlas. I know Atlas is a part of Sega, but they're credited as a separate company in the copyright, so I'm going based off that. If another Atlas character would to make it into Smash, it would probably be a Shin Megami Tensei character, since that is, at least it was, their most popular franchise before Persona 5 came out. Now, I don't know a lot about the series, I'm starting to notice a trend, so I couldn't tell you which character would make it in. The only character that I recognize is Jack Frost, but I don't know if fans of the franchise would like that. They'd probably prefer a, a protagonist of one of the games. So, you know. But definitely a Shin Megami Tensei character. Definitely. Well, the next company is Microsoft. And, hmm, gee, I sure do wonder who could possibly be... It's Master Chief. It, it would be Master Chief. What? No! Now, of course, Microsoft has other characters, like more characters from Rare's lineup, uh, Forza... But I feel like Master Chief is just kind of the next logical step. The only thing that I really see going against Master Chief is his virtual non-existence presence in Japan. And while Nintendo and Microsoft has certainly has had a chummy rela relationship recently, I do wonder if Microsoft would actually be okay with Master Chief and Smash. Like, I already know Banjo and Steve are in Smash, but Banjo has a deep connection with Nintendo before Microsoft bought him, and Minecraft has grown to be so big that limiting the one platform would kind of have just shot themselves in the foot but master chief is a character that was made to be microsoft's golden boy having master chief and smash would be like having mario and playstation all stars you know but hey you you never know microsoft has been chummy so it is entirely possible you know the fact that that's a possibility is like it's mind-blowing to think how far we've come next up is snk uh Okay, so after some research, because I knew nothing on SNK, so I had I, I had to really dig in deep there. But after looking into it, it seems that the character that would be most likely seems like it would be Ryo Sakazaki from Art of Fighting. I think all out of all the companies that already have a character in Smash, SNK is probably the least likely to get another one in since their franchises uh they're not that big. Now, of course, like popularity doesn't necessarily have to matter. But I do think we will most likely see more bigger franchises. Because, like, if you look at the, the last Fighters Pass, Terry's really the only one who can be considered niche. You know, Joker, Banjo-Kazooie, Dragon Quest, even Fire Emblem to a degree is, you know, massively popular. Terry was kind of the odd one out in that situation. I think that if we do get a smaller franchise, it probably just won't be from SNK. Next up is Mojang. I don't know. They they don't have any other characters. I, I can't see Mojang getting a single other character in Smash. What? No! The, the only thing that they were known for is Minecraft. They made like two other games that did not well at all, and that's it. So yeah, Mojang, if there's a company that's less likely to get, get a rep other than SNK, it's Mojang. All right, now that we got the companies that are already in Smash out of the way, let, let's move on to the ones that 
aren't in like has been represented in Smash yet, at least via characters. Let's get the obvious ones out of the way first, though. Uh, Ubisoft, B Rayman, you know, Assassin's Creed is already in as a Mii costume. Rabbids, you know, not that that necessarily quote unquote deconfirms, but uh, but like Rayman is definitely one of Ubisoft's most known franchises, even if he's not treated as such by by poor poor Ubisoft, poor poor Rayman. Activision, while they do have a lot of franchises like Spyro and Skylander, the character that would be the first would most certainly be Crash Bandicoot. Activision has been pushing this guy very hard, and Smash would certainly help boost her sales of his games, especially if Crash and Smash and Crash 4 got like a simultaneous release on Switch. You know, that, that would certainly be a good marketing tactic, and you know how much uh, Activision likes marketing and money. Epic Games, okay, yeah, I know many people dread this thought, but if Epic Games was to get a rep, you know it would be a Fortnite character. Now, if a Fortnite character did get in, personally, I'd find that hilarious, but I'd also be kind of just indifferent to it since I've never played Fortnite, so how could I be happy or sad about it? Just be kind of funny. But as long as they're fun to play, that's that's all that matters to me. Bethesda, it would most certainly be Doom Guy is incredibly important in the history of first-person shooters. He would be the first first-person shooter rep in Smash, and he's one of Bethesda's most recognizable characters. So yeah, I think Doom Guy would be the most likely. Now, let's move on to Valve. If Valve was to get a character, I think the most likely would most certainly be either Gordon Freeman from Half-Life or a Team Fortress 2 mercenary like Heavy or Scout. I really badly want to say Chell since, like, she's my most wanted, but deep down inside, I know that it, it would probably be one of those two first. You know, which makes me sad, but, you know, I'll hold out hope. Maybe she'll get her chance another day. From what I think, Gordon Freeman is one of the most beloved and important franchises of all time. If Doom set the standard for first person shooters, Half Life re redefined it. People to this day are still holding out for, for Half-Life 3. That's how dedicated people are to this franchise. Team Fortress 2 is incredibly popular in the current age. The demand for Team Fortress 2 has been one of the most rapid growing I've ever seen in the Smash community. Um, if I was to make a d guess on why, it probably has to do with just how wild the picks for the roster have been, especially with the first DLC pack. So I think Team Fortress 2 went from some unreachable impossibility to something that could legitimately happen, which has these people cheering the series on. Next company is... EA. <coughs> I think from all the franchises that e from EA, I think the ones with the highest chance are Plants vs. Zombies, Mass Effect, or The Sims, I guess. Honestly, I, I, I don't really see any of these getting in, but if Plants vs. Zombies was to get in, I definitely wouldn't be against it, you know? I grew up playing that series, and I loved it. I even played through the microtransaction-filled sequel without spending a single cent. It was a nightmare, but I still liked it. Mass Effect is a game that was made by Bioware, which EA bought out and surprisingly hasn't defunct yet. Uh, but hey, I mean, if... Commander Shepard was was to be in Smash. I would think that'd be pretty cool. It'd be a pretty cool complete left field choice and the Sims would be interesting uh, The Sims would certainly be interesting uh, I, I don't know how you'd even get them to work But bringing up the Sims in a Smash prediction video was on my bucket list So here we are and for the last company. I'm deciding to look at Sony since you know we're never going to get a Sony rep, but if we were to get a Sony rep, who would it be? There's plenty to choose from. Ape Escape, God of War, Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, The Last of Us, Uncharted, Sly Cooper. Such a large quantity of characters to pick from. But if there was one to choose, I think it'd probably be Kratos. He'd be very interesting. He'd be very cool. I'm not sure which iteration they use. They probably would. It'd probably be like Cloud, where his design from the first three games is the default. And the design from the most recent game would be like his alternate. But, you know, I don't know. And with that, I'm going to end it here. I know there's like plenty of other companies, but like I said, I'm not going to look at them all. Don't have the time. I don't want this video to be 20,653 hours and 32 minutes. But I don't plan to end it here. This video was playing it very safe, looking at each company and logically thinking, okay, realistically speaking, which character has the most likely chance? But... 
for my next video, I'm putting on that tinfoil hat because we're going to be looking at complete oddball choices and explaining my reasoning on why I think they could make it through complete conspiracy logic with no actual evidence. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you look forward for the next one, and I'll see you guys next time.